Greetings. In this video, we will look at the process to create a question pool, how to add our own questions, and how to import publisher test banks. To start, log into eLearning and enter your course. On the left hand side, go into the control panel, expand the course tools. Scroll down and click on Test Surveys and Pools. We're going to work with pools, which are used to create, import, and organize questions. This is the pools dashboard. Here you can see that I already have several pools. To build a new pool, you can click on Build Pool. If you have a publisher's test bank, you can add it by using the import pool function. Now we will build a pool. When we click on build pool, we're asked to enter pool information. We will call this chapter two. Below is the description that can help you identify the pool for future use. Although you also have an instructor's box, this option is better utilized with a test canvas. So now we click Submit. Here we are in the Pool Canvas page. This is where we add questions. There are three options to add questions to the pool. The first is Create Question. That has a drop-down list of questions that Blackboard provides. The other option is Find Question that already exists in your course. These could be questions from another pool or from another test inside of your course. The third option is upload questions. You can upload questions that were downloaded or created as a text file if it is in a Blackboard ready format. These are the three options to add questions to the pool. But today we will create questions. So I'm going to hover my mouse over Create Questions, which again offers a list of formats that eLearning allows. Please refer to the videos that cover each of these question types and their unique features. First, we will create a multiple choice question. By clicking on multiple choice, we now see the edit question canvas. Any field with an asterisk is a required field so the question title is optional, but if you do add a title, it will enable you to identify your questions easily to add them to your test later. The question text is a mandatory field. This is where you will enter actual question text. Notice the text editor toolbars at the top where you can create tables, lists, and headers. If you want to add media like videos, attachments, and images, within your question text, then you can use the Add Content button to insert a local or course files. Be sure to check that your question is legible and ADA compliant by using a preview command. And the accessibility checker. Next, we look at options. The first option is answer numbering. You can choose to number your answers or leave it without any numbering, which is a best practice. Below, we look at answer orientation. Here, you can choose to allow partial credit and you can choose to show answers in random order. When you enable partial credit, a portion of the total points a question is awarded when an answer isn't entirely correct. Some question types allow you to assign percentages to answers, but with multiple choice, you can deduct points for choosing the wrong answer. I'm going to ignore partial credit and choose to show answers in random order. This means that every time this question is presented in any test, the answers will show up in a different order for each test taker. 
This makes it difficult for students to predict the answers to this question. By default, the system provides you with four answer choices. You can increase the number of answer choices by selecting the drop down menu and choosing another number. If you need fewer choices, then you must select the Remove button. By default, the correct answer is always set to the first answer choice, but you can mark and enter the correct answer in a different location. Note that within each answer choice text box, you once again have full service text editor and insert tools. So let's enter our answer choices. Because I'm referring to a paper test with the correct answer as the second choice, I'm going to select the correct answer choice button. Since this question only has three choices, I'm also going to select remove and delete the fourth choice. When the remove command takes you to the top of the page, just scroll back to the answers. Once you have included your answers, the next step is feedback. It is a good practice to enter a correct response and incorrect response feedback for every question. This enables students to review the materials whether they answered the question correctly or not. Please note that we will cover when students see feedback in a later video. Correct response feedback serves as a reinforcement that the student selected the right answer and it also helps you add justification or further information. Incorrect response feedback is when you encourage a student to look for the correct answer in the learning materials. So you should populate these two fields to the best extent possible. Next, we have categories and keywords. These labels help you identify questions for future use. For now, I'm gonna leave this blank. Last, we have instructor notes. You can add notes for yourself or for your teaching assistant to help with creating this section. Once you have edited these settings to your liking, we will click Submit. Now we're back to the pool canvas. As you can see here, this is a question that we just created. From the dashboard, you can see the question title, the question type, and when I hover my mouse on the question, I see a drop down button which allows you to go back and edit the question further. On the left-hand side, there is a drop-down for question types. So every question you add gets added to the question type field, allowing you to sort questions based on the type. Let's now add another question. So from create question, we will add a true-false question. Let's enter the question text. Each question has its own customized set of options. In this case, since this is a true or false question, the option is to just select true or false. Once again, you will see the correct response feedback and incorrect response feedback. Categories and keywords and instructor notes. Let's submit. And now our second question has been added to the pool. You can see the question text and the question type. And if I expand the question types, you will notice that a new type has been added. True, false. Let's now create a matching question. So from create question, select matching. Let's enter the question text. Now we move on to adding the question answer pairs. There are two separate boxes provided, one for the question and one for the answer for my question and answer pair. 
because there are four sets, each pair has a partial credit of 25%, meaning if the student gets this pair correct, then they get a 25% point value to this question. Moving on to the next pair, you will notice that we have the option to reuse the answer choice from an already created pair to make the question more challenging. So I'm going to enter my question, and instead of entering a unique answer, I'm going to select Reuse Answer Choice. From Question Answer Pair 1. Notice that the answer choice disappears, and the system will apply the answer from Pair 1 to this Pair 2. And also going to leave the partial credit 25%. I will now create two more question and answer pairs that each have a unique answer. Now that we have four question answer pairs, you now have the option to add unmatched answer choices to make matching more challenging. Let's select this and add two answer choices that will not be associated with any matching pairs. And now we have unmatched answer choice one and unmatched answer choice two. And these answer choices will be presented to the students as extras to make the question more challenging. We don't want a third unmatched answer choice, so I'm going to click on remove. So now we've created a matching question Four question answer pairs where we are using one answer choice and two unmatched answer choices in the mix. You can choose to manually order these question and answer choices to randomly present the answers. Once again, we have our correct response feedback and incorrect response feedback categories and keywords, and instructor notes. And once I've populated these fields, we'll go ahead and submit. Please note that eLearning will only save your question when all the pairs total to 100%. So if you receive an error, be sure to look at the percentage breakdown for the pairs. And now, my matching question has been created. If I expand the question types, a matching question type has been added to the list. This is the process to add questions to the pool. To view these questions, again, you can click on the question details. To edit questions, hover your mouse over the question text. So you can click on the drop down button to access the edit command. At this stage, you don't have to worry about default points because points will be added in the test question stage. To go back to the pools list, you can select OK on the bottom of the page, or if you scroll up, you can use the breadcrumbs to access the pools page. And now that we're back on the pools page, you can see a chapter two pool with three questions and a timestamp. This concludes the process for creating pools. Please watch our next section on how to build a test.